artist uh, Santiago Forero. Uh, I am a visual artist. I, I, I am a visual artist that works with photography and I always say that because I think that uh, the life of a photographer or a professional photographer or the work usually of a professional photographer is, is different from a visual artist that uses photography. Not meaning that one is more or less, but is that they both are kind of different paths. So I, I was trained as a visual artist. So my education was like with art history classes, uh, painting classes, sculpture classes, like all around what we can call, let's say, visual arts or studio art. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went to the University of Texas to uh, enroll in a graduate program uh, of a studio art, but with a concentration in photography. I had very clear since I was in undergrad that I wanted to work with photography. Uh, because it was like a medium that it was kind of like, I enjoy it and I, I was getting like kind of uh, proficient uh, in the technical aspects. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I guess when I was in undergrad, I didn't feel that I was studying art. No, no, sorry. I felt that I was, study I was studying art, but I didn't thought it was possible to make art. Okay. You know, like, like, you begin to do all these uh, assignments and works, but also I, I was learning with a generation of artists, it's like my professors in undergrad were not active artists, were just teaching, so they didn't uh, push you to really uh, tell you that making art was possible after after okay. that, 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 that's very interesting. Um, how does that translate to uh, the learning? What, what kind of thing do you, if, if you're not supposed to practice what you're learning, what, what is oh, it? No, 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 no more practice, but I <laughs> guess what happened was that uh, when I was an art student, my professors were not active artists, so they just, uh, taught you what they knew about making art wow. but that doesn't mean that they really showed you that uh, being an artist as a form was possible because okay. they didn't do it themselves yeah. they were like most of them were just there like i guess uh, having an opportunity to teach and have a job i guess yeah yeah so uh, and, it, it, and then when when i when i went to grad school that's where i realized that making art was possible because mm -hmm. well, I was surrounded by other uh, like students that were making art and my professors that were like professors and at the same time were active artists. They were like yeah. making art. So they were like in that uh, dialogue. So I think that I began to make work or serious work when I graduated uh, from uh, undergrad and when, and then I, it, pushed me much more when I went to grad school uh -huh. to pursue a career in making art with photography. But maybe the impetus was already there, right? I mean, how, do, how does one go from an undergrad pro program that where you don't know if you're going to be an artist to, especially UT, with, a, you know, it's kind of an ambiguous, the route is your own, right? At UT, it was, it's, even even the photography it wasn't even a program, right? It's kind of like a concentration. Yeah, exactly. It wasn't yeah. even a program, but, but the interesting thing, and the interesting thing was that when I was in undergrad here, or when I was here thinking that I was going to study photography in, outside from Colombia, I was thinking, okay, yeah, I'm going to get like this super uh, technical training and I'm going to get very good at uh, uh -huh. photography. But it was funny that when I arrived, they told me, okay, we don't, we don't have photography classes for you. You have, <laughs> you have the keys of the photo lab 24 hours a day. You have the keys of uh, all the equipment here. Go and make photos. And I was like, okay, let's, let's, let's do it. So, that, so that's kind of the like greatest uh, gift now. Yeah, it's amazing because it, it does, that's, that's where freedom comes. And well, freedom is difficult, you know, like, mm -hmm. like 
Uh, very, very I, true. Very true. What I, what I mean, what I mean with freedom is that, yeah, you are you are designing your own your own path, but that's very difficult because you don't know what's right, what's wrong. You are just like trying to get into get on track. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, that freedom is like the freedom of the artist. At the end, like you're you're not. You're not guided exactly to do something specific. Like you really want to express yourself. You really want to research uh, themes you're interested in. Uh, so yeah, I think that uh, I'm, a, I'm a visual artist that works with photography. Uh, and uh, I wanted to like leave clear that the, the training as an artist is very different as the training as a photographer. Yes, and excuse me if I say this, um, you have a very strong technical, formal, I think that's what I, I always liked about my work. When I talk to people about your work, uh, they always say, oh, you know, Santiago is very technically proficient. Uh, where did that, if, if UT wasn't where you learned that, uh, was some of that part of your undergrad education? I think it was like a long process and uh, I think it has to do more with uh, when I was in undergrad, uh, I, not, not even in undergrad, when I graduated from high school, I got, I, I got very good at computers, mm. like at working with computers. Yes. Uh, because I, I was really bad at a lot of uh, high school uh, classes. Like, uh -huh. I was not good at math. I was not good at uh, science. I was not really good at anything apart from art. Mm -hmm. But the high school wanted me to graduate, like to to pass that level. So they 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 changed me some subjects just for, to do projects. And one of those projects was like make, making the the web page of the school. Mm. That was 1997. Yes. So everything was programmed. There were no like, there were not even like uh, all those like fancy software like we have today to make web pages. But I got really good like at uh, at at working with computers and making web pages and making banners and and making like yeah all that all the layout of the web pages and then. I began when I when I went to the undergrad. I began to like the parents of the kids that were in my school noticed that I designed the web page of their, the school, so they began to call me to see if I can make the web page of their companies. Mm. So I began to have like this job. I was like studying art, but I, at the same time I was I have I was like this freelance web designer, probably like for ten years. So. I got really good at putting like composing stuff together, uh, digital. And then I began to be really interested like in digital photography and Adobe Photoshop. And, and I got, yeah, I, I guess like my technical part of my, 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 my technique, I got it from, from working like long hours in the computer. Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, which, you know, this is this idea of technical proficiency is something that's sort of the focus of the class. Uh, it's it's called digital imaging. Um, I, I'm very interested much more in the students um, sort of embracing the ambiguity, ambiguity of a project, but wrapping that around um, technical lessons, I, I suppose. Uh, and then one of those things that always comes about is equipment, right? Like photographic equipment, technique, what program do you use? Uh, and I see here uh, for this series of um, portraits uh, that you're using this, uh, I think, is it, is it an icon point and shoot? It's a cell phone. Cell it's, phone? Yeah, it's a Nokia cell phone. It was oh, like wow. a okay. Well, yeah, the, the story behind these images are that, well, when I, when I went back to, came back to Colombia from the U.S., uh, I felt like uh, Cinderella. I didn't have like the 4 by 5 cameras. I didn't have like mm. the lighting equipment. I didn't have the UT photo lab. Okay. I, I didn't even have like a, 
or no, I, I had a digital camera. And I was used to work with all this equipment for my photos, for staging and everything. Uh, and also it was this moment of my life that I didn't know what was, I was going to do. I was trying to stay in the US like uh, uh, after graduating, but then I had to come back here because I had to pay the government uh, my student loan for going to the UT. Oh, it was like a very weird time. But I remember that my father really knew that I was a, well, that I was a photographer and I really loved cameras. And he gave me as a birthday present this cell phone. It was a Nokia cell phone. It was a Nokia cell phone uh, directed to photographers because it was the first cell phone that had like a 40 megapixel camera and you could shoot uh, photos in RAW, uh, as a RAW file. So I was amazed, I was like, okay, he gave it to me and I began uh -huh. to like use it all the time. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this series began because, well, I was playing with my new toy, let's say it. And I was uh, visiting my, well, it was like the sister of my grandmother. And she had her apartment like decorated as in the 70s. Mm -hmm. like, like she never, she never redecorated the apartment. She left it like that. It's, uh -huh. the, it's, the, it's the green photo. Okay. And I was in the bathroom. We were in this family gathering. I was in the bathroom. I saw it. I wanted to take a picture of the bathroom, uh, but I didn't want it to appear in the bathroom. So I began to do all like this kind of like uh -huh. idiot, uh, like, <laughs> like dumb uh, movement to not appear in the photo. Uh -huh. Uh, also, cell phones are really not good to focus. They 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 don't have all these uh, mechanics to uh -huh. focus. So it was really difficult to focus the 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 subject uh, without looking up and uh -huh. being like this. Uh, so I took the photos and then I went home and then I began to see the photos and I was like really amazed with what was happening. You know, like mm -hmm. I was seeing this hand like taking the photo of this bathroom, but then I realized, okay, it looks like if, it looks like a lot of meanings. It can be like this person that doesn't uh, get to the mirror to see uh, himself, or it can also be anybody taking a selfie, you know? Mm -hmm. Also that was 2014, I think, and the, the selfie as, a, as an image was like getting very popular. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, I began to yes. I I, I love these uh, because I I can see you kind of just exploring like you mentioned this. Uh, There's more of an accident, right? And so I feel like they're not forced. Like they just uh, talk a lot about you, but without being too pedantic about it. It's, it's super relatable. Um, so yeah, no, these, these are fantastic. Um, yeah, and I was also thinking in this, well, when the selfie appeared as a, how do you call it? It's not, it's, it's not a genre, it's like <laughs> a, a type of image, let's say. That, that, let's say, let's, let's say that, that the selfie is a type of image. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, I was making self-portraits before, and usually self-portraits were like this genre that made artists, artists made self-portraits. They were yeah. like these images of a lot of decisions, a lot of control, a lot of contemplation, a lot of things like emotionally and psychologically of the artist himself. And then we have the selfie. Mm -hmm. And the selfie is like this image that is like everybody takes it. Everybody is, is everybody right now is in the action of being a photographer, you know, everybody takes a selfie, they, they go to edit it, uh, and then they publish it. That, that, that's, that's the work of an artist, that's the work of a photographer, but now everybody's doing it, and I think it's yeah. awesome. But then I realized that the selfie uh, has a, an additional thing, that is like, the selfie is an image to share. Like, the selfie is an image that you need response to, you know, like, you don't take it to say, save it on your cell phone and and having it, you know, neither is your artwork. It's just something that you need to post it and you need some kind of response, even if it's a like, even if it's a comment, even if it's a, a share. Mm -hmm. So I was really interested when this image began to appear to, to put it like in this, in this uh, tension on, on this dispute of yeah. 
what is which is more strong the self-portrait or the selfie because they are like these two uh, type of images that begin to collide so that's why the series are called cell portraits because it's the cell of the cell phone and the portrait of the self-portrait but it's has like this double meaning yeah also quite ahead of, of the time i think 2014 people were still doing uh, ducky face right yeah, I think that the, 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 the 2013, 2014, where it was like Instagram was getting like really yeah. popular. Super heavy filter. Uh, yeah, now like uh, cell phones began to appear with this uh, frontal camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very different. And I can also think of another project. Um, do you know uh, Joel uh, Sternfeld? Uh, no. Oh, jo Joel, Joel Sternfeld? Joel Stanford. Uh, uh, I think he does. He did a project called I Dubai. But famous, famous American photographer. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Joel Sternfeld. Um, which I guess maybe yeah around that time as well. Um, and what we what was he doing? I Dubai. It was uh, this book published by Steidel with um, photographs of. Um, people shopping in the Emirates, I think. Uh -huh. But it, it's, it, it's very nice because it plays, the, the book itself is the format of the cell phone. It's kind of like a small book. Oh, okay. I'm going to check it out. Yeah, it, it, I think it, it's, it's pretty good too. Also a very neat response to that sort of early emergence of, of selfies and sort of, you know, the people were worried about photography at this point. Yeah, the, the anxiety of photography, I think it's, it's the term that we refer yeah, to. Totally, and, and the, I think that, well, when, when I was making these photos, uh, I had the opportunity to exhibit them, and then I had the opportunity to, to, to sell them in this Colombia, Colombian art fair. Mm -hmm. uh, and they went really well. Like they, they sold really. It's the, it's the only time I have I had sold my work. I think the only time. But then I realized that the people connected a lot with this imagery because it's like this activity that people is doing all the time. Yes. Or at, at that point, is at that point was this new activity that the people was doing all the time. The the, the, the idea of the selfie in the mirror. Yeah. No. It's 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 to, you know to this day I, I I'm a huge fan of, of these cell portraits. Yeah, and also I think I think that this this series also takes a little bit on on art history in terms of the spaces, you know, like like these spaces are really rich in color, are really rich in what's happening. It's it's not only like the idea of the the physical image of a person. It's also like like the idea of contemplating like these bathrooms that are like kind of like pic pictorial or yeah, like, like really visually with a lot of details so i i, I think that I, I really didn't want to leave that behind like the idea of that how how a photograph can be seen as a as an art piece or like as a, a very rich visual piece yes and, and it's always the bathroom is always a testament to architecture um great architecture always has the bathroom very well designed the i think the cooper union it's a new building uh which was designed by this um i'm gonna blank out on me but anyways th they lost all their endowment on on the building uh, oh my god <laughs> yeah uh, and uh you know the always the test if you if you were a fan of architecture is you know let's check out the bathroom check out the bathroom to see how it is and it's kind of like this private place right nobody looks at you but you're also still self-aware kind of like how you were feeling uh but the bathrooms there have um they're horrible right really because um the the sinks are very flat right and so if you're opening the faucet you're just getting water flat. comes out <laughs> oh my god <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I think I think that I I really hate. For example, I I really don't know a lot about about architect, ar architecture. 
But I, I really hate one thing that is happening, I guess, lately with these famous architects and famous design that uh, now art buildings, art buildings meaning uh, like uh, buildings for art students or art faculties or whatever. Yes, yes, yes. yes. They're, they're, they're like having these fantastic famous architects to, to, to do these incredible visual buildings, but they're useless. Mm -hmm. they're useless they're like yeah. visually fantastic but then they begin to have a lot of problems in usability yes like, it's insane like, i don't know i don't know why why they're doing that like i guess what we were discussing with a friend another professor we can blank and, out the names of the museum so for, for <laughs> <laughs> i'm not gonna say names because also i work in institutions <laughs> yeah. so but, but but we were we were saying no come on like it's is it, this is strategy like for attract art students look look where you are going to study mm. it's like this is not like economics this is not medicine this is hard this is like beautiful but then when you're like working like really like beginning to work and doing like serious stuff then you realize that it's not usable it's it's insane okay. so i guess that yeah the, the the bathroom could look super awesome but uh huh. You know, it was, it's terrible. And but it's now, terrible. That, now that you mentioned this learning, um, the, the architect's name's Thomas Paine. Uh, and the classrooms, some of the classrooms are long, horizontally long, right? So that means if you're sitting on the right side, the professor could be like at a very awful viewing distance. So, you know, they don't even work for teaching. So. Exactly. They don't even like they, they don't even make it for like for teaching really being better. Yeah. yeah and, and like they, it, it should be like the actually it should be like the, the objective, you know. Exactly. But but yeah, no, it's you know the, the Cooper Union did lose their endowment on Oh my god. This piece. Um so did, did you was it how was it the activity of looking for bathrooms did you was it something you're obsessed with or was it more yeah like, yeah when i when i get with an idea or i discover an idea or i have an accident i have this vision i guess i just have to explode it until it's like how do you say it like until you can't have anymore uh -huh. so this is a work of two years two years of going to well two years of of Every place I went, I went to the bathroom. <laughs> if it was a restaurant, if it was a house, if it was <laughs> whatever place I went to the bathroom, I, it, I, I put it like in my daily activities. Yeah. Uh, and talking about technical proficiency or technical, like being really good at technical, well, I discovered that were really dif difficult photos to take because of the angle and everything and because of the apparatus. So, okay. I probably spent half an hour in every bathroom to do it. So it was funny because people began to knock to see if I was all right or to see if there was a problem in the bathroom. So I had to, I had to change my strategy. So I, if it was a restaurant, I talked with the manager. And if it was a restaurant, and I went to the bathroom, if I liked the bathroom visually and I saw the possibilities to make the photo, I talked with the manager and told, I told him, hey, I'm a visual artist. Uh, I showed them my work, I showed them what I was doing, and I told them, can I make a photo in the bathroom? And they tell yes, okay, I'm gonna spend probably half an hour in the bathroom, but everything's gonna, everything is gonna be all right. I have to I have to manage it like as a photo shoot, because if not, it was, I, I yeah. couldn't make it, I couldn't do it fast. When, when I photograph fast, then I went to my house, and then I saw that the, the photos were out of focus or had technical problems. So I had to be sure that I, 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 I get the, the, the picture really well. So I didn't have to do a lot of post-production. Yeah. So I guess that idea of being really technical, being technical has to be in all the parts of the uh, image making process. Yeah. Like yeah. From capture to post-production. Yes. And, and, and like refining the, the little things, right? It's the, the, even the process of going to you know, finding bathrooms, knowing how to do it. Yeah, yeah for example, this bathroom is in this uh, bakery. It's like this bakery here in Bogota. The owner is this French crazy guy that decided to decorate all his uh, bakery as the 
Versailles, Versailles Palace? Like how do you Versailles. Versailles Palace. Versailles Palace, yeah. So is everything so exaggerated that when I entered to the, the, the bakery is already exaggerated. So I knew about the bakery. So I went with my parents to have some coffee and then I entered to the bathroom. I was like, oh my God, this is the bathroom that I have to <laughs> photograph. Yeah. No, th these are fantastic. Um, and then another, you know, kind of switching gears here. Another project that um, seemed to have that same honesty that, that the previous one did is a series with your your niece, I believe. Yeah, 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 with my niece. Uh, how how did this start? These the origin of this work is earlier of other work I did that was called the story about gnomes mm. uh, that I lived, that I did in two thousand nine. It was a project that, that I began to do self portraits. Uh, photographing myself or my figure from behind. That's the one uh, where you have that uh, a plaid shirt. That I have what? The, a plaid shirt, like black and. Black. No, no, no. That's that's other series, but okay. it, it's on the same time. Okay. But it's like this uh, ten image series that I began to photograph myself uh, from the back. This that, that was like two thousand nine, I think. And at some point I began to photograph my niece when she was three years old, also from behind. Uh, I was shooting with film uh, and I used to, to process the film every six months or every two months. And then after one year of taking photos, they were like very two different moments. I began to find the pairs, like pairs that were really like similar. So for example, I was in California in the Joshua Tree Desert standing in a little log, in a little tree. Mm -hmm. And then I found one of my niece in Boston in uh, mm -hmm. uh, winter. She is standing on a super big uh, tree. So she looked like very small in a big tree, like cut tree. And I look really big in a small tree. And I began to find a lot of pairs that, mm -hmm. of, of my, my niece and, and me and myself. Yeah. And uh, that was like this project that uh, I, well, I exhibited and everything. And then when I came back to Colombia, I had a friend that he was, he's a photographer, but he also wrote for a magazine. And uh, he told me some, well, he, he asked me if he, he could interview me and publish the, my work in the magazine. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And then he gave me the magazine, like the physical magazine. I began to read the interview. And the interview was really interesting because it was not only like question answer, it was more like question answer, but also the thoughts of my friend, like a response to, to what I was answering or what, yeah. what he was seeing in the work. And when I read the interview, I read something really particular that he was talking about those years in 2009 of the story about gnomes. And he said something like, uh, okay, and this is Santiago's niece when she was three years old. Now Santiago's needs to be so different because she has grown up. When I read that, it was like this kind of like, uh, yeah, like spark. So I was like, okay, my niece nowadays is not three years old, is 10 years old. And she's also like uh, getting to my height. Yeah. So I said like, we have to do another project. So my niece was, was bigger. She was 10 years old or something like that. Uh, she was more like an adult when she was three years old. But she was like a kid, like a child. Mm -hmm. So I asked her, hey, uh, I want to show you this project that I did uh, six years ago with you. You were really little. You probably didn't remember. Uh, but I think I want to do another project in which uh, we continue these stories. So the first story was called Story About Gnomes. And I told her, what about if we do this project called Story About Friends, because we have the same stature or we're really close in, in terms of height or our bodies are really like kind of the same scale. Uh, and she said, yes, she said, hey, yeah, let's do it. And we put some rules, like uh, the first rule was that uh, our faces or our identities should not appear in the series. And that uh, most of the ideas we have to negotiate, it. like we have to 
think together in ideas and and think if if the idea works or not and 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 we can reject ideas from one another like you know so it was really fun because this is, was also like probably one year two year project uh, in which it was very difficult because i could only work with her when we when she was free yes and and kids at that age are like in high school in, in school in every type of classes she had the kind of classes she had guitar classes like yeah she, she was really busy <laughs> so most of the photos happen when all the family is in trips in road trips or in vacations oh, okay. or in uh, and also it was really difficult because it's very different well, I'm an adult, I'm a visual artist, I pursue my projects, I really discipline, I, I go for it, like, but if you're a kid, it's like, oh, I have to take photos again with my uncle, what is this <laughs> thing? I want to go and play with my friends. Yeah. So it was like this negotiation, like, it was really difficult, but, but, but I was really happy at the end with the project, because I think what, 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 what happened in the project was, that is a project that shows time, shows difference in bodies, mm -hmm. but it also shows time and shows how photography marks time. And we, when we began the project, my, my niece was shorter than I. Mm -hmm. And when we finished the project, that is like the photo of the towels, she is taller than me. Right. Uh, yeah, when we begin the project, she is, she is shorter. When yeah. we finish the project, she is taller. And I really love to see that because uh, it also shows that projects like projects really fit with time, you know, like like time is something that if you can see it in a project, it it, it makes it much, I think, much more powerful. Uh-huh. Very different timeline than your the first project we saw, right? It's it's kind of like two different processes. Yeah, totally. Also, well, my work uh, it's, it tries also always to to talk about the body, to talk about identity, to talk about scale, mm -hmm. to talk about race. Uh, and this project, I, I think that this project also has a third chapter, because when when we were when we were uh, working with the story about friends, uh, I realized I told her, well, okay, when we finish the project, you're you're gonna be a little bit taller, but you're still going to be a a kid mm -hmm. but we should make like a third and final chapter is going to be called a story about giants in which she is going to be like much more adult and she's going to be much more taller than me and so that it's like a trilogy yes but that hasn't so, happened right no that hasn't happened because she's still well she's now a teenager she's okay. now she's now 15 years old Okay. So I told her that probably, well, I don't know when people stops growing, or I <laughs> don't remember, but uh, I told her, and she, she also, she, I have talked to her like recently, or probably one year ago, but well, she lives in, she lives, now, she lives now in Sweden, but uh, she, she has the, the project in mind, like she knows that, that there's, okay. there's a, there, there's a third chapter mm -hmm. that's sometimes going to happen, so. So I'm looking forward for it. Me too. I'm super looking forward to it. Uh, awesome. Yeah. And then I think this one um, I particularly enjoy quite a bit because it relates to how you and I met. Um, well, we, we met at school, just kind of passing by the hallways. Uh, but and then doing Kim drinking in beers beers yes yeah double dave uh, double dave <laughs> and uh crown and anchor and crown and anchor yeah i remember um but this particular picture uh, i had met uh our for our former boss uh, sergio uh, i met him at a concert joanna newson concert and then months maybe a year later um, I, you asked me to do this um, work with you guys, with you, um, and it turns out that the same man who I'd met at this concert was, um, was, the, was, master. was the master of uh, Hispanic advertising. 
But most importantly, out of all this, is that he had this really awesome. How big was that print? This was like fifty-five inches by forty-four inches. Probably. Yes, which I think really was at the core of the whole company. Like it was kind of like the the symbol of it. That at least that's how I thought it because it was you know very a corporate building. But then this picture. Uh, was in his the most beautiful office in the in the building, I think. Yeah. Or the more stylish one, you know. Um, but it kind of represent. It kind of meant a lot because um, you know we're talking about Hispanic advertising, and here you have a portrait of these two very humble people uh, in a you know the the office of the C C F O C C O or what whatever. Uh, can you tell us a little bit more about this uh, series? Yeah, I remember I I was I was in Austin. I was finished. I finished undergrad. I finished my grad program, and I was staying by this uh, legal status that they give students. They give foreign students uh, in the U.S. called OPT, optional optional practical training. Mm -hmm. That is that after you graduate from an undergrad or a grad school, you can work for a year legally in the U.S. So I wanted to do that. So I began to teach in, at duty, but then the the job at duty uh, finished. So I wanted to to work work to still be there. So. I remember I did an internship with that advertising agency because as an artist, you always doubt if you're like in the, wrong, in the right place or not. Mm -hmm. So one of those moments that I was in doubt, I said, look, probably I can work in advertising. I'm a very creative. <laughs> so I did this, uh, this internship at this uh, company, mm -hmm. Latin Works. Uh, and I remember I was, uh, smoking a cigarette. It was like the, the worst, like the worst status you can have in a company is the intern. I was in the worst status. I, you know, you know how I felt. Have you seen this movie? Uh, it's like American American movie of these two guys that do an internship in Google. Yeah, <laughs> I've seen it, but I know it. <laughs> well, is that this? really grown up so like doing an internship so I, I was like yeah I was like 30 years old doing an internship like, what, what's, uh -huh. what kind of thing but I was well I was smoking a cigarette outside the, the terrace and I didn't know who I was talking to and they were like these two guys uh, talking and then one of the guys asked me the terrace of Latin works ah yeah 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 yeah, yeah. looking into the city right yeah yeah exactly and mm -hmm. and then these were these two guys were talking and then one of the guys talked to me what do you do and i was like i'm an intern and do you what do you do and i was like well, i'm a photographer do you have a portfolio yeah and i gave him my web address or whatever uh -huh. and then i received an email from the cco uh -huh. Hey, please come to my office. And then I realized that the guy that asked me for my portfolio was Sergio, the CCO. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I really like your photos. I want, I want to do a project for me, you know? Uh -huh. and, and I was like, uh, okay, but I'm an intern. And, and no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Now you work for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Very okay. Sergio fashion. Yeah, he's the boss, so I'm protected. Uh, so the idea was doing this series of photos that kind of talk about uh, Latino culture, or Hispanic culture in the U.S. How how they mix or how they how how I how I could like build a or stage a photo that talk about it. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> I kind of told him that well I was an artist and that I, I knew a lot of art history and that uh, uh, I'm gonna make him some proposals, you know, like so I usually never do that because as an artist you you just begin to make and and you're just following like intuition around like what you're making and then you but when when the work is commissioned, is that you say it means? When the work's commissioned, well, it's, it's different because you have to uh, 
fill some expectations, I guess, and, and, and play you under some rules. But the good thing about Sergio was that he was like really free and, and you just propose. So I, I, make, I, I remember that I made him this word document with some ideas. Uh, and he liked two of, of, of these, that was like this appropriation of this uh, uh, super like appropriated image that is the American Gothic of mm -hmm. uh, Grand Wood, the um, American painter. And that that image has been so appropriate, so like has been like appropriated like a million times, I guess. Yeah. But I really like that image because, well, it well the the the, the original painting shows context. That is what is the American farmer, and the American farmer in that context in that time, like I guess were the forties or the thirties, I guess, mm -hmm. uh, was. Uh, white uh, American, you know? Uh, and then when you, well, I, I did a, a research, when I was in undergrad, I did like a photographic project about illegal immigrants in the US. Uh, Latino, uh, Latino American uh, illegal immigrants. And I did like a research, I did a series of photographs. So I, I was really, I, I kind of understood a little bit the, the context of Latin American immigration. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, then I realized undergrad that- Undergrad before you came. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my thesis, my, in, in undergrad, we had to do a thesis project that was like a one year project. So my, my thesis was a research on illegal immigrants in the US. Uh, immigrants that crossed the border illegally from Central or South America to the US. So I went there for, six months I guess mm -hmm. and I did like a documentary I did like some some photos I did a research I talked with the people I I got like their their experiences and and, and I got immersed in that uh, like in that investigation or that research and then when I was thinking in this image of the American farmer or the yeah, like who takes care of the of that uh, like job now well, well they were like like uh, latinos hispanics so so for creating this image i, I took the uh, the base that was this uh, painting of grand wood of the the farmer with his what's the name of this fork for the trident uh, hike or yeah uh, and and this couple that were looking like at the kind of the sub of the to the camera or to the artist, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that I wanted to imagine that same image, but with uh, uh, people from Latin America and the actual workers. Yeah. So instead of the this fork, I, I used like this, I created, I built like this kind of tool for making drywall, like, mm -hmm. uh, but with this kind of like, it's like a, I wanted to make it also really absurd, you know, like really, uh -huh. really ambiguous. I didn't want it to really represent something as it is. I really wanted to imagine and create this world of, of how something can be, uh -huh. even if it's really exaggerated. Uh, and I got to, I remember I got to Fiesta and I bought this, uh, this uh, suit for the woman. I actually work here with a costume designer. Yes, that, uh, which is, uh, that series is coming next. So I'm sorry. okay. Yes. Okay, so I worked with a costume designer. We were like imagining that like this the 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 the, the wardrobe for these these guys. So so I got this super purple shirt, but I really wanted him like with this uh, working uh, overall. Uh, and actually, I wanted to get a house like in the painting, but I. I couldn't find one and then I was driving and I saw this super blue, like that thing that is in behind is not even a house. It's like a bed shop, uh, but <laughs> it has like this cover like of, if, as if it was like a super big uh, blue house. Uh -huh. So I, I used it like as a backdrop. Yeah. Uh, and I actually worked with, uh, uh, 
with real workers. These guys yeah. are not models. Like uh -huh. I, f I found a woman in, in a kitchen, in a Latino restaurant kitchen, uh, that a friend worked in the restaurant. I, mm -hmm. I told him, look, I, I'm looking to, for this type of a uh, woman. Do you think somebody, do you know somebody? Oh yeah, I think you can, <laughs> I, I know somebody that can work for that picture. So I told I told her, hey, we're going to do this. And he was, yeah, let's do it. And the guy that is the worker is actually a labor worker that stands those labor workers that labor day workers. Uh, day workers. Yeah. Day workers that they stand like in the front of Home Depot yeah. and somebody picks them up. Yeah. And I went there like, well, okay, I'm not gonna look for a mob, like I look real people. And I and I and the good thing was that I, well, I, I, I'm Latino and I speak Spanish. So uh, there was like some kind of trust and confidence. I told them, hey, I'm a student. I've just graduated. I do this kind of work. Uh -huh. this, is, this is an image I want to construct. And they were like, yeah, let's do it. Of course I paid them because mm -hmm. it was a commission work. So actually Sergio had a budget for doing this. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. No, that, that's awesome. Uh, and yeah, I think trust there is, is super important uh, because um, I've done certain kinds of work, creative work, uh, tried to at least, but there's always a strange barrier uh, between the people that maybe find themselves in these situations and uh, being in, uh, photographed or videotaped, right? Um, but you, you seem to have a very direct uh, experience with that. Yeah, and I think that one one of the ideas of trust also is that you show your your older work. Like I showed them what I did before and what I like. I didn't only. I my intention was not 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 only to use them as models, but more as tell them, hey, I have like a background on on understanding yes uh, latin american culture in u.s culture and uh, i want to talk about it with, yeah. with the image so i wanted to be like really honest uh, with what i was doing you know 100 percent. and then uh, we have this image which is also part of there's two images on, on this series yeah the, the before one and this one yeah yeah, this one was was because in the proposals I got to Sergio, uh, one was making like this. I was showing him like this, his these paintings, these portraits that they did to kings and queens in the 16th, 17th, 18th century, uh, or 18th century probably. And I told him, yeah, I want to I want to portray like this 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 worker as as if it was like royalty to mm -hmm. see. To see what copy, what happens, but but to 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 put him in an imaginary that hasn't existed before, you know that you never see like uh, people that is not from the royalty in this kind of uh, yeah imaginary. I mean, and it's like there's a kitsch uh, sort of Latino accoutrement, right? Like the the sort of the plastic sacred heart or metallic sacred heart of Jesus and the little candles here. Yeah, I like to, to put like small details that they are not really visible, but if you, if, if you uh, let's say, if you disaccelerate and you stop and you begin to, to see, mm. you, you, can, you kind of spot some details that give you a little bit more, well, not context, but can generate more questions about what you were seeing, you know? Yes. Like you have to like uh, analyze it and understand uh, how those, those, those objects connect. Yeah. Uh, to understand also what, what, what is the image about? Is the image about a real uh, king from the past? Or is the image about the image has, that has never existed mm -hmm. about like uh, race and about like social status and all about all these things that, well, we, we deal with the past and we deal uh, today. Yeah. Well, and, and hopefully we see this one day.
Yeah. Um, there we go. Uh, so you, you had talked about uh, you worked with a costume designer and you're mentioning that you, know, you take deep care in sort of producing your images. Um, and I think this is the first work that I ever was aware of for you. Um, could you describe this working relationship with your costume? Yeah, I was, I was, before this series, I was doing some series called Action Heroes, in which I was doing, I was producing these self-portraits of heroes, like Hollywood movies. And I was portraying them, like, I was like kind of inserted in the images, and I was working with strobe lighting, with the location, like, it was, I was entering into, into this idea of, overproducing or staging a photo, like as, as they work in film or as they work in magazines, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, but there was a point in which my capacity for inventing was limited, kind of like, uh, let's say, I know how to do the production, production design of a photo, mm -hmm. but if everything is, is kind of, actual, if everything is like today, let's say, you know. But then I realized that, uh, that they really wanted to, to, to invent, invent something almost from zero, you know, like, uh, like invented from, 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 from zero to see what happens. Mm -hmm. So I got this idea about uh, making these false Olympic games, these uh, counterfeit Olympic games, let's say like that, uh, in which, well, I, I know that my image or my figure is excluded from all these heroic characters of movies, but also my figure has been excluded from all these heroic uh, activities like, well, not heroic, but high uh, endurance sports and uh, all these imaginary, you mm -hmm. know, like, like uh, they will never put uh, a figure like, like mine to uh, promote Nike shoes, for example. Yeah. So I wanted to know what happened if, if I work on that. So I decided to do these fake Olympic games. Uh, and uh, I decided to, the first dec decision was eliminating context. I wanted a plain background. So the viewer who like concentrate in the figure and what was happening with the figure. Also I was referring to this, the beginnings of photography with Edward Muybridge. That was like this, this first pioneer photographer that he did like the, 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 the sequence of the horse, like walking in photographs. But he has this beautiful series of, of the body. And he has this beautiful series of, they're like sequences. So it's called like, for example, a woman uh, going upstairs. So it's like a studio photo in which a woman uh, is going up like this, like uh, wooden stairs. And in the back, they have like a, a grid. Like the background, the backdrop is a grid because it's a study of the body. You know, it's like a scientific image. It's not like, yeah. well, not today is, is seen as an, in the art context, but in those, those times, photography was really scientific to study things. Yeah. So I really enjoyed those those images he created. And he created of, all, of everything, of men, women, birds, uh, horses, animals. Like it's like just a study of the body. So I wanted to have like this plain backdrop, so people can get attention to what is happening. And I I look for a, I really like sometimes. Uh, to collaborate. I, I really like the, the, the idea of collaboration when in image making. So I, I, I talked with this, uh, with this uh, costume designer. Uh, when, when you're in the university, the universities are a really awesome place because uh, you meet people from very many different disciplines. When you're an artist outside of university, you're alone, you're like secluded to your studio, and you don't see other people, but when you're in the university, you just have contact with so many people and you can have access to so many uh, facilities and everything. So I wrote an email to the director of the theater department uh, at UT 
telling her that I was a grad student and that uh, I wanted to make this for a project and that I wanted to work with another grad student that work in uh, costume design and that mm -hmm. if they send me their portfolios, we can like do something. And I received like five or six portfolios and I saw oh, wow. the portfolio of this uh, mm -hmm. awesome uh, student, Alison Herrier. Uh, her work was amazing and I was like, yeah, let's work together. So we began to I began to download a lot of photos of the of the Olympic Games and make like a kind of like a a, a wall with all the sports I wanted to make and we 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 began to make to see the sports and one of the rules that we decided to to take on was we don't want these uniforms to look, look to look really legit we 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 want to these uniforms to have a lot of mistakes you know. Mm -hmm. We want to, we want to uh, make evident the mistakes uh, because we are not making real sports images. We are yeah. like creating this world around these fake Olympics. So the logo of the Olympics is upside down. <laughs> the logo is made with like pot potato seals. I don't remember. Like uh -huh. it's it's a it's a kind of like print that is really basic. It's oh like, like, yes, yeah, potato prints, yeah. Yeah, potato print, like it's what kids use in school. Mm -hmm. I remember, I don't remember if it was potato print. Or, everything was very basic. We wanted to to, uh -huh. to take it to that point because what 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 I wanted was that if you see this this image from really far away, because they are super big, they're like a poster uh -huh. kind of size image, uh, you kind of think, oh, that's like an advertising for sports, like Reebok, Nike. But when you get close to the image, you begin to see that the lines are, are, are painted with really basic paint, that the, 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 some pants are made, out, are made out of burlap. Uh -huh. uh, some shoes are not even for sports. For example, these are like, these are the ballet shoes or ballet <laughs> practice. And then we began to put like stuff and to paint them and kind of like, uh, Pin them up, oh, how do you call it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but for example, in this one, this like this is like a ballet trouser. I don't remember where uh -huh. this is. And the line of the of the thing are like are like painted like with hand and with like a brush and with whatever yeah, paint we we found. And I, I we never retouched them. I really wanted that that if you get close, you see that it's really, really, really not well made. So that, that's when you begin to ask questions, what I'm seeing. I'm really seeing a, an image of the Olympic Games, or I'm just seeing like a construction of the Olympic Games, and that is an image that talks about image construction in a way. Yeah. Ah, fascinating. Uh, but at the same time, I, I remember you, you mentioned to me that you, you trained for some of these. Well, I think it's not not that not not just a tra it's not a training. I went the other really wrong way that was making like a, a really extreme diet. Oh, okay. Because when you make a diet like and a very extreme one, like all the you don't get muscles, but all the skin begins to get close to <laughs> your muscles. There, yeah. Yeah, so so yeah, I'm not stronger. Actually, I'm weaker there because because the training was. I'm not really good at at uh, working out. Uh, no, but, <laughs> but yeah. yeah, but but the, but I had there had to be something about the body that yeah, like some artifice around mm. uh, that you have to that the image have to be of somebody that look fit to yes. be participating. On, yeah, yeah. On, on those sports. I think when we met, you'd said, you're like, man, I hurt myself. There's oh, and I also, yeah, that's, that, that was really bad thing. I, I hurt myself. Uh, putting up that uh, bar. Yeah, yeah. Because the, the weights are not made of, uh, are not real weights. They, uh, there is a, a duplicate we did with a machine. They had a duty in the design department that was Oh, the, the vacuum and, form. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so the, the weights are, are plastic and have a um, styrofoam on the inside, but mm -hmm. the bar was real it's, and the yeah. bar was really, really heavy. And I lifted it up like without training or anything for the photos and, and I, I messed my back. Oh, so uh, that's, that's, uh, 
uh, uh, advice for students, never put yourself on risk for a project. It's not worth it. Mm, but, you um, know, take, take the, do push yourself to. Yeah, yeah, push yourself, but, 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 but analyze the situation and, and have friends with you if you're going to do something physical to, yeah. to, to, to not force a stop. Yeah, my, my, my brother just told me that I forget the name of the photographer, but he did the the Ravens, um, the photo book of a, a Japanese photo book with the. Um, okay, I, I don't remember the, the the name of the photographer. But I yeah. remember yeah. the image. He died uh, being stupid. You know, he got drunk and you know jumped over a fell over a building and, and died. Oh, because he was photographing. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, and yeah, you have to be like really, really yeah. attentive and to really uh, that what you are doing is your profession, but it's not worth it to 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 take risks. Like at the end, it's a profession as, uh, as any other, and it's not worth it to like yeah, like injury for a photo. And it was not worth it like for this series. Uh, it's just one series more, mm -hmm. but the, the body like uh, is is serious because you need it for the rest of your life. So. <laughs> life injury yeah. uh, and then one last uh, project and i i want to kind of introduce it with this one statement you once made to me uh, which you said um that you worked you were very passionate about film photography but uh you started making uh, film and movies um because of the medium right uh, because you recognize that perhaps you wouldn't have a a photo lab, you know, after graduation, but you could make, anybody could make movies with the computer. And so here you've made this really amazing uh, film, which I will edit in here. Um, but uh, it's a really beautiful production. Um, and I would just want you to talk a little bit about the film, Hombre Dorado. Yeah, Hombre Dorado, uh, it's like a, uh, it happened because of a lot of reasons. The, the principal reason, like the main reason, is that I began to work as a professor in a university here, uh, like full time. Uh, and uh, when we entered as the new professors, uh, well, we were like uh, on our first year. The university told us that we, we had like a kind of a, a scholarship to make work uh, for research, you know, a budget uh, to do a project. So the project was, the, the, the budget was like a, like a good, like for making, like it was like, like for, for a year of working and, and everything. And Every time I begin a new stage in my life, mm -hmm. I try to explore something. So for example, when I arrived to UT, uh, I began to make these super staged photographs with lighting and with these four by five cameras that I never used before. Mm -hmm. And I began to explore things that I never did before. So. I think that when I entered this stage of my life where I had like a job and I was making photographs, but I want to explore new new mediums, new ideas, I said it was like a perfect moment to, to make a short film. And when I was in undergrad, I studied, uh, well, my, my, my emphasis in concentration in undergrad in visual arts was uh, like audiovisual image making. But I was really on on mature in, in mission, as you said. So most of the production we did were really bad. <laughs> were really like those things that you don't even want to show. Yeah, they look they look like soup soup operas. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. And you use the term immature, or is that in, what you... in, immature? Okay. Immature, like as as when you are mature. And be, before yeah, yeah. your yeah. measure, uh -huh. but also amateur. Oh. <laughs> it's like it's like that combination. I felt oh. when I was in under, <laughs> when I fell in when I was in undergrad, I mm -hmm. felt like that. 
But then after years of, of, of making images, you, you have like more experience, you, you understand more how images are made. And uh, is, I guess it's, the transition is easier to, to go to other mediums. Mm -hmm. It's not very easy, but at least you have some knowledge on many other things that can yeah. contribute to that. The, the principles carry over. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so for this project, I, I proposed that I wanted to make a short film about the encounter, the first encounter between uh, natives from somewhere and the West world, like, you know, like the colonization, like trying to take on again this story that has been told and told and told and told to see what happened. Mm -hmm. So, so I began to write it as a script and then I began to do, began to work as a, as a, as a film making uh, process in which there's like a production designer, I am designing also, I'm producing it. There's a director of photography, there's like a, a costume designer and all the, all the, all the process. Uh, and I ended up with a short film that takes on that idea of the uh, El Dorado legend that is like very popular here. Here is like in Colombia is like, mm -hmm. we even have, is we we are supposed to have the El Dorado Lagoon. That's um, where all the El Dorado myth happened. Mm -hmm. that, well, I don't know if if it's actually true. It's a myth, but I really wanted to play with the myth idea. Uh, so uh, I wanted to create this fantastic world about uh, uh, who is a native, how the natives look but pushing on the idea of how do natives look, meaning that the native idea of native has been constructed by art history, by Hollywood, by everything. So in a way, I wanted to do a native that is overused, meaning they, they have this suit of a native, you know? Mm -hmm. They're not, their bodies are not painted. They have like a, a body suit, like as if it was like a, a kind of a cover, let's say, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to, to also talk about how we think about any type of uh, image that is secluded, can you kind of say, like in a way? Uh, not secluded, but I think that's not the word. But uh, like single. Want, yeah, or I wanted to. I wanted to see uh, what happened if I if I played with a lot of symbols that they really don't mean uh, nothing specifically. Like mm -hmm. everything, everything what is like drawn on on their body suits are like just things that we were imagining with the uh, with the myths about natives and with all yeah. the myths about. Uh, colonization also because uh, these images also or th the whole idea also works from the first painters that came to South America and they were like Dutch painters and began to paint images of natives mm -hmm. uh, during the colonization, the British colonization and, and uh, Spanish colonization, and they portray the natives as uh, cannibals, as like these kind of like uh, monsters, you know, like the, the, the image of the native was monsterized. Can you, can you say that? Yeah. Can you say monsterized? Um, or is really wrong? <laughs> no, it's, it's mon there's something monstrous about them. Yeah, that's how the, the Dutch painters, when they began to live here in Brazil. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was basing this, I have the book here, is the Albert Eckhout. He was a painter, that, a Dutch painter, that began to, to portray these, these natives as, 
as if uh, they were really like bad people, but yeah. also because it's the narrative of the colonization. Like if you portray these men that are cannibals, that they are like really like uh, they don't they don't have culture, they don't have anything. Uh, in Europe, you can legitimize a assassination of these of these people, you know. Uh -huh. So I wanted to take on that on the, in that imagery to make like a film in which uh, a lot of a lot of uh, symbols of that construction are made. But the story is not always that the side of the West is going to be right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the chirping goes around that that narrative. I wanted to do it in. It's a chirping. It's a film in black and white because I like the idea that it looked more like a document kind of. Yeah. But I wanted to make a series of photographs of the characters of the film that are, are the ones that we are seeing right now, in color, thinking in those like paintings made like in the 17th century or 18th century. Uh, about kings and uh, and about uh, and I, I guess if you see if you see the 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 one before you were shown the one of the women. This one. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is very connected with the one of the Mexican American Gothic. You know, I wanted to to to, to okay. try to 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 see how how you can work with those imaginary imaginaries and. Uh, make questions about how some cultures and some racers have been uh, represented through art and through media and through everything. Mm -hmm. So it, you're never shy of it. It's not, um, because I think maybe today we're in very confusing times where uh, at least here, uh, people just kind of want to erase a lot of the west right but um it seems to me like an inescapable idea um and so here i think these figures are in sort of a very regal 16th 17th century poses and so you're not necessarily denying the influence are you yeah no i'm not denying also also like in a way we i, I do think that we can't erase history but we can also analyze from that history uh, how many narratives you have to see because mm -hmm. there are many narratives the, and when i was doing this project i i was reading about narratives of the colonizers but I was also reading the narratives about the natives. Yes. You know, everybody has their, their story. Mm -hmm. Usually the narratives of the West are always gonna be the ones that we saved or that we brought a culture, that, like that everything that the West does is right, you know? Mm -hmm. And also then the narrative of the other side also sometimes goes to, to that idea of uh, of the contrary, you know. Yeah. So So what kind I, of things were the the native saying? The pre Columbia. Well no, actually the narratives of the narratives of the of the natives uh, what, what I was hearing were more about uh, uh, of course, abuse of the of what of what happened in colonization, death, and all all these things. But also, I, I really I was really interested in the tradition that they carry on and on. Let's say about the uh, celebration ceremonies, uh, nature, their view about nature, okay. for example. Uh, that that was something I was trying to to sure. to to put in the film. There is that one scene where they're performing a ritual. Right? Yeah, exactly. That they really they really connected with with the environment. To say mm -hmm. they they really understand that we have to live 
uh, together. Like we have yeah. to, it's not something we can dominate, you know? Yeah, yeah. Something like we have to live with, protect. And these guys, they are like in this idea of domination, you know, all the time. Like yeah. They want to like... find gold. They want to dominate these people. If they want to, like they, they don't care. They have to get there. This other side of these women are also, also much more aware of where they are. These guys are not. And also this, this is a story about dispute between male power and, and female power. Like I really like the idea of, of these two um, forces. Mm -hmm. And I guess in the short film, the, the power is given more to the, to the female power. Yeah. Like at the end of the short film, uh, the guys that lose are the men. Yes. They lose a lot, you know, like they lose a lot. They lose uh, what they were looking for. They lose, they lose uh, orientation. They lose direction. Yeah. They lose so many things because the other side that was the female and the native and the nation was much more aware like, of, of things. So, I wanted to play with, with yeah, if, if they have told us the narrative one way, how we can play with the narrative in another way. It's, it's like, I think it's a, a story that has been told so many times, you know, like the Eldorado or the colonization or that. Wait one second, that I'm in darkness. Okay. <laughs> There. No, yeah. I think you can see me. Yes. <laughs> I was like, it's my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> no, so uh, as with the Mexican American Gothic, that image has been done and redone, you know, like the, Mex the American Gothic. So I wanted to, to take a, uh, a chance on this story of El Dorado to see what happened if you, if you remake them from here, from where I'm standing. And, and yeah. And also from image making, from, from sorry, from, from moving image to see what happened. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, if in the, in the, the other uh, pieces I only, I only had the uh, image, now with short films and with films I have image, I have sound, I have movement, I have time, uh, yeah. I have, editing and that complicates much more the, the work, but I love kind of to mm -hmm. complicate the work <laughs> in a way. You, you even had two different narratives at some point, right? Yeah, like the first one was really obvious and I really didn't like it. Well, that's, that's the thing that, that uh, this is a new territory for me. So I didn't pay attention to a lot of things. And, and if we go to the technical proficiency or proficiency in, in all aspects, I think that you have to pay attention to everything, you know? And, and in this project, in the first cut, I didn't pay attention a lot to the story. I was much, as, as, as I come much more from uh, photography uh, territory and not uh, writing or, uh, let's say, creative writing territory, I didn't put a lot of attention. So when I did the first screenings, I, some people said, dude, <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> this this story is the same thing I like have been told us before. It's so obvious. What what are you doing? So fortunately, like I shot so much uh, that then we with uh, the editor we began to to try to change the story to see what happened and put here put there. That that process is much more related to art making, you know, like yes. trying stuff. It, I, uh, I, I followed the filmmaking trajectory as I, as I remember when I was a student and it didn't work out. But then when I went and, and changed the order and put these things like in, 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 in different times, the, the piece had a little bit of new air and was not that obvious as the, as the, the first one. So that's, it's a learning curve, you know, and, and, and I really love this. I really loved making this piece because it kind of made me aware again from where I, what I am as an artist, like a, a, 
Uh, and also made me aware that you always have to try to experiment, to explore, to, to not be really like uh, uh, happy all the time with what you do, but question yeah. yourself the time what you are making is saying something, is uh, asking questions, is, is uh, uh, putting the, the viewer in a space where they can imagine, for example, and where they are forced to, to think. Yeah. It's, it's very similar to what one of my favorite directors, Quentin Tarantino, sort of says that uh, every movie that he does is completely different. Like he never wants to tell the same story once, uh, multiple times. Um, and I feel like your work always has a very intense taxonomic thing about it, but it's also very different every, for every project. And it, it keeps the work very new and fresh and enjoyable. Yeah, and, and, and I think that going back to that uh, idea of freedom, the freedom of the artist, I think that's the, that's the only thing we can like really take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, I don't know, if you work in an environment that, well, it's still creative, but did you still have somebody on top of you telling you how it should be? Uh -huh. uh, well, you, you do it and it works and everything. Uh, but here, uh, freedom, uh, it's also that idea of exploring, like of, of, of taking the chance of, I'm gonna try to see what happens. It can be really bad, but I also think that for creating good work, you have to make bad work in a way, in some way. Yes. But that chance in other environments can't happen, you know? Or I, that's how I see it. Like, yeah, I am. Uh, especially in the commercial environment. Because if you fail in the commercial environment, uh, you're done. Yeah, and you, and I guess. Well, I think the process is kind of sanitized. Uh, yeah. There is no opportunity. To there do is that. no opportunity to yeah. fail. Yeah. I, I went uh, to a project before this, uh, an ad uh, project, and I really went through the process of beginning to end. Like, it's been vetted millions of times by uh, people from all sorts of backgrounds. And at the end, you get this somewhat contrived thing. Yeah, I do, you know, yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. that, that you know that it's gonna, it's gonna work because it's very, it's very controlled. It's has, mm -hmm. There are so many steps and, and things, but at the same time, all that, all that process that is so controlled uh, really doesn't let you really uh, explore, experiment or take risks. It, it can be a risk somewhere, like, uh, I guess, in, in a creative way. But I think that, uh, that what I enjoy about art is that uh, whatever you are, like, trying to make or, or to, to put together, it feels more like a, a lab making, like, you're, like, just mm -hmm. kind of, like, uh, making experiments yeah. to see what happens. Yeah. Uh, so I like I like that that position of the the artist that, that we can take we can take a, a lot of risks in in what we do that well I was discussing it with a friend uh, that also teaches and we were saying how how we how we deal with grading art and uh, grading and we were saying that well fortunately we are not teaching like a neurosurgery mm -hmm. that if the student fails, probably is gonna kill somebody. <laughs> you know, in art, if the student fails with the project, well, it's just making bad art and it's just bad for <laughs> that person. <laughs> so yeah, we were having all these discussions that there, that there are some, some disciplines that you have are really being super strict, like uh, engineering. You know, yeah. architecture, like, uh, uh, but in art you can you can take a lot of risks.
yeah. and I think it's about like taking risks. So yeah, like this this piece is, is a was a risk because I was confronting a, a workflow that I was never related to. Working with like thirty people, that, that why maximum like I work with my photos with two people. Uh, and I, it also I also learned that uh, I really want to to keep on like things smaller. That when there are so big things, also sometimes get out of control. But but you have to experience it to see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Well, Santiago, uh, we've been here for an hour and a half. Oh my God, it didn't, it didn't feel like that. That was awesome. Uh, thank you very much for you know, joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, huge fans of your work. Uh, one day I'll be able to buy your Mexican-American Gothic. Oh, don't worry. We can trade, you know. We can trade. Always. <laughs> we also <Yeah>. trade. <laughs> always trade. Uh, we always trade. My house is going to be a Forero Museum. <laughs> you, are, you, are, you are the biggest private private collector. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. I'll put that. You know, thanks. Thanks so much for the, the invitation. I'm really happy here to to share my work with the students. To yeah, to 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 share what what what, what I do and. And I hope they enjoy it, and I they hope they continue their their curiosity for making images, and, and especially for for that uh, idea you were talking about about craft and about like being proficient in you know mm -hmm. making that it's it's uh, something important in, in the 